Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a mind-blowing book that completely flips the script on how we think about mental health. Good Reasons for Bad Feelings by Randolph M. Ness. If you've ever wondered why anxiety, depression, or even things like addiction exist in the first place, stick around, because this book doesn't just ask, how do we fix these problems? It asks, why did evolution leave us so vulnerable to them? Let's break it down. First off, Ness is a psychiatrist and evolutionary biologist, and he's not afraid to ruffle some feathers. He argues that instead of seeing mental disorders as bugs in the system, we should see them as unfortunate side effects of how our minds evolved to help us survive. Think of it like this. Just as our bodies get fevers to fight infections, even though fevers feel awful, our minds have evolved to feel anxiety, sadness, or guilt for good reasons, even if those feelings sometimes go haywire. Ness introduces six evolutionary reasons why we're vulnerable to mental illness. Here are a few that really stood out. Defensive responses. Just like a smoke detector that goes off when you burn toast, anxiety is meant to protect us from danger. It's better to have a few false alarms than to miss a real threat. Mismatch theory. Our brains evolved for a hunter-gatherer world, not for Instagram, deadlines, or 24-7 notifications. That mismatch makes us prone to stress and depression. Trade-offs. Some genes that make us vulnerable to mental illness might also have benefits. For example, the same genes linked to schizophrenia may boost creativity in relatives. Ness dives deep into emotions like sadness, guilt, and even grief. He says these aren't just random glitches, they're tools. Sadness can help us let go of unattainable goals. Guilt keeps us connected to our social group. Even depression, in small doses, might have helped our ancestors pause and rethink their strategies. The book is packed with real patient stories. Like the executive who became depressed after a big failure, his low mood actually protected him from wasting more energy on a lost cause. Or the person with OCD, whose brain is basically stuck in threat detection, overdrive. Ness criticizes the current psychiatric system, especially the DSM, for treating symptoms as diseases. He says we need to understand the evolutionary roots of our feelings to treat them better. Sometimes, the goal isn't to get rid of anxiety or sadness completely, but to learn when those feelings are helpful, and when they're not. So, if you want to understand why your brain sometimes feels like it's working against you, good reasons for bad feelings is a must-read. It's not just about fixing what's broken, it's about understanding why we're built this way in the first place. If you found this summary helpful, hit like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments, what's one bad feeling you'd like to understand better? See you next time.